What's up, everybody? You're listening to Where's My 40 Acres, the Boob Tube Podcast. And this week, we're reviewing the blackest show on television right now, FX is on Atlanta. Shout out to Donald Glover, man. I mean, how would you know you were alive unless you knew you were God? Hey, hey. My boy hooked you up. He made you the lemon pepper joints, but these got the sauce on them. Life itself is but a series of close calls. What's up, everybody? And um, we are back for episode ten of the Atlanta podcast. This is Where's My Forty Acres Network. DJ is crying in the background. <laughs> this is it's the Boob Two podcast, and for the last nine weeks, we have been doing recap reviews of FX's Atlanta show, uh, written by uh, Donald Glover and Stephen Glover, directed by. God, I'm not gonna say this. I'm not gonna say his name right. Like hero. It's, it's, it's hero Mura Mura Mure. Mura. I'm a fuck. I'm just gonna mess That's it up because I'm yeah. just. I'm not gonna get it right because I don't know I, I, no I, I, better. Shit. He directed I, this shit. Though. I wasn't raised right, so I did. I just. I can't even help you. I, I can't even say no. That's not right. Yeah. Um. This is sad because ten episodes. I agree, DJ. Just was not enough. I can't. I'm just like it went off, and I got like I got so sad. I was like, "What's going it on?" It don't even feel like it was ten episodes. It don't. You know, and I I think the reason that it doesn't feel like it was 10 episodes, because I was thinking about this last night after I watched it. I had had time, so I went ahead and watched it last night, and I watched it four more times a day. Um, I I love this show. And this is, it's a movie. It is, it's one of the only television shows I can think of that legit is a movie spanned over 10 episodes. You, each episode was a scene. And the plot development of Paperboy trying to get himself together as Paperboy, or Alfred trying to get himself, Albert trying to, whatever. I get, I'm gonna get his name up next season. Fuck his name up next season too. Alfred. Albert trying to get himself together as Alfred. Alfred, did you say Albert? So you just threw me off. Alfred trying to get himself (laughs) himself together as Paperboy. Uh, Derry is just being there. Derry's so everything. Earn trying to prove that he can be a good father and a good manager. And have his shit together. Vanessa trying to be a mother. And everybody else in Atlanta <laughs> surrounding them. Just and, trying to make it yeah, in I Atlanta. Mean, I mean, just creating plot for them, basically. <laughs> and this was a movie. If you look at the way the first episode started, if you look at the way different episodes played out as scenes from a movie, and then you look at the wrap-up in this episode, it ended like a movie. I mean, it... It tied everything together and not in typical fashion. Even the film grain, which looked like a film. It looked like I was ro- watching a regular black film, like something directed by John Singleton. That's what especially it felt like. Walking at the, like. Yeah, especially the last scenes. I mean, even his last scene with Vanessa felt like the man, today was a long day type of scene. I mean, it felt like the last 10 minutes of a movie after the, you know, hit the big climax and they just wrapping stuff up. Yeah. And they really brought it all back. People have been watching this all year, all just watching this whole season thinking, man, it's so random. Some of the stuff that's happening, but there is a thin line of linear plot happening. And we made it all the way to the end. They developed the characters for us. We love all the characters. We understood the story. This chapter Even of it is Jade. pretty much over. Do we love Jade? Well, Jade is not a main character. <laughs> so. You just said the characters. We, the ones we see mostly every episode. <laughs> I'm just messing. <laughs> not, not the wag. By the way, we did not use the term wag to describe her. Because I didn't know that was a legit term. Yeah, there's a whole, there's a whole TV show called Wag. Well, if you knew that, why didn't you say she was a wag? I mean, I just didn't care that much, but I knew the term. We were doing existed. a review of the episode. You're supposed to care that she's a wag. Why did you tell her she was a wag? But in 
wag something about the being a wife? Wives and girlfriends. Wife and girlfriends. But is she a girlfriend? Or is She's she both if you need her to be. <laughs> yeah, like is she being claimed as a girlfriend or is she just being She's she's a claimed as being there. She's one of the girlfriends. Oh. So she's a wag. She's in that that whole you know, he pays for my dinner and asked me to come to listening parties for the dick. So Right, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if she, off, but... she, she she might not have got up to the girlfriend yet. Uh, she's been to London, sir. She doesn't like the rain. That don't mean I'm, you're the girlfriend. I'm sure, I'm sure it might be. It might be. Uh, these are these people. are ball players we talk about. True. Yeah, you know that their, their money is different than ours. So. <laughs> like you're, you're you know, a flight to London is like us getting a happy meal at McDonald's. Mm. Well. She's a happy meal at McDonald's then. So. <laughs> so what what was the name of this uh episode? The jacket. The jacket? Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean I it's plain and simple. <laughs> this was, I'm trying to think of a director besides Curly Hero that would have shot that shoots films this way. Like like memento ish, kind of Christopher Nolan ish. But they're telling a story within these random scenes. It's it's kind of like I guess it's like Christopher Nolan ish, kind of mixed with like um, I can't think yeah. his crazy ass name right now. Tarantino ish, way it's kind of how they did this. Mm-hmm. But it's just a television show. I don't know movies. It's okay. It's, it's okay. So I'll just say yes. It's okay. I don't know. Some some of it reminds me of a. Uh... Could be way off in this, but it reminds me a little bit of a uh, David Fincher. No, it's dark like Finch. It's definitely it's definitely a dark tone. He did Gone Girl. It's definitely a dark yeah. tone like Finch. Oh, I saw Gone Girl. That was a good movie. He also did Timberlake's video, Suit and Tie. Oh, so, but it's just okay. like this that kind it's of still real, a little darkish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's a real kind of subdued and this and scenes don't the people don't say a lot. But the scenes in the in the background speaks for them, a right? Lot, you know, which is why I wanted to specifically talk about um, Hero, because we haven't discussed him this while we've been covering the show, and he is directed, I believe, every episode. Yes, and he also he... directed his um, Childish Gambino's, the little movie he made when he before he did um, what clapping for the wrong reasons. Yeah. He because see Hero came and I think we did mention that he came from doing music videos yes. to doing this. And okay. that's a pretty big to to me I feel like that's a big jump. But I wonder what Who it felt else like for him. But the they were video as for besides child. Um Earl Sweatshirt, Chet Faker, Flying Lotus, David uh yeah. Guetta or Guetta, I can't say I hate his music I can't say his name. The Fray, Block Party, Queens okay. of the Stone Age. So yeah, he's a he got a degree from USC School of Cinematic Arts. Wow. He's a Tokyo born filmmaker. He's out in L- he's out in LA. So and you know, he, I mean he did like if you go back and kind of watch Clapping for the Wrong Reason, it it has the same kind of feel that Atlanta does. Mm-hmm. It has things happening that you see that you kind of want explanation for, but they don't really give explanation. Clapping for the wrong reasons had absolutely no explanation for anything. In that you know what I mean? Movie. Like, so you just had, and then like playing with that weird, um, is this reality or is this not? So like, when you hit like the uh, part where they had, uh, was it uh, Daniel Fisher? They had Topanga up there. Right. So you were like, is she playing like Daniel Fisher or is she playing Topanga? And she, they, I mean, they also had a uh, then, a porn, like, a porn it, star in the joint yeah, too. Yeah, but in the whole time you're like, is oh, this wow. like a movie where she's a where, and that's like all the, all that girl did is like the one that was the porn star, or she, she was the one she that basically passed walked. him in the hall. Yeah, she just walked past him. Yeah. So when you <laughs> so when you when you see stuff, and you recognize these people, like these people are there, but are they playing a character? Are they playing themselves? You know, you know, and then. They're there. Should I know why they're there? And, and a lot of those little things when you go back and kind of like, I think it might be good to even go back and just rewatch it because you go back and watch it. Might pick and up you'll some see, things. You'll see those kind of, 
you'll see parallels that you see in um in Atlanta. Yeah, you're right. Actually, nah, because I it was it happened so long ago. It happened in 2013 that that was released. Yeah, and we kind of been waiting for this to come because this the, the follow up of production talk about this show actually came not far along after that. So I kind of like had that removed from my mind. It would be interesting to go back and watch that now and see how how familiar it feels just just you talking about it um yeah it did feel like this it yeah, it was like, kind of you know, Atlanta just it, it just exists it was it was <laughs> like um like dream state-ish that yeah. the way that was shy and this is kind of the same way and I like that like I, I like the I like the fact that I felt like I was watching a movie in parts for 10 episodes I'm not sure how many episodes they're gonna get for season two uh, we'll know when they return. I read ten. Sounds good to me. Yeah, there's a there's a part of me that feels like this is not like it was on a major network where a major network sometimes would have ten episodes, and then the, if the thing gets big, they'll pop it up to like thirteen or something. Mm-hmm. I you know because yeah. FX usually does more like that kind of avant garde type of sitcoms. So there's a part of me that feels like. Um, like he came, he had 10 episodes and this was the story. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I wouldn't be surprised if he kept it 10 episodes. I mean, I'd be happy if he knocked up the 13, 14, cause I'll watch them all. But there's a part of me that feels like this wasn't cut short. This was what he wanted to say. Mm-hmm. So, um, I know if there, if there are people looking for another show to watch, if you haven't been watching it along with Atlanta, cause it's on the same network. And it's not American Horror Story. Um, that is not for the faint of heart. It's Better Things is actually a really good show too, and is also What's a that? critically acclaimed show. Um, Better Days is about um, is Pamela, A- is it Adlon? She she came from the Louis C.K. show, which was FX, and she kind of just that? played this friend. <laughs> it, it, Louis C.K. is a comedian, and you you've yeah, seen him before, of probably right now. Kind of the roots of. Yeah, kind of like the same vein. Kind of dreamish shit just kind of happened, and you never get a full explanation as to why. In some of CK shit, like wow. the fact that his wife was black one time and white when they were younger, they never really explained that. He just huh? wanted to do it that. W- yeah, he felt he wanted to have the woman that auditioned to be his wife. He liked her attitude. He liked the way she acted, and she happened to be black despite him having despite them having two white daughters together. He cast her and did never questioned it. Like they never questioned that on the show. They never acknowledged that she's black. She just mm. is black. But they did a scene in a future episode later on the seasons where they show when he and her went on their first date or had sex for the first time. That's what it was. Where they had sex for the first time and it was a white girl. It was a young white girl. And he said that scene more fit with her. Like she more fit the young white girl into this goofy teenagers having sex scenario that he was going for versus the woman that is now the mother of his children. And, you know, he basically has to share custody with and is a better parent than him. The black woman fit into that role better. And like he said, he just never, he just, ca- he cast them on quality. He didn't cast them because it had to be um, CP, you know, he didn't cast them that way. And both of them, they like loosely play like just real life stuff. Right. Like you're not going to see those, those big sitcom setups and stuff. You're just kind of, you know, something might happen in the morning with these kids. And then that's the whole episode <laughs> of how is he dealing with whatever happened with his kids and stuff like that. It's an interesting so, show. Like you, you start watching enough of FX shows, you'll get a feel of the type of stuff they, you know, look for, they look for. So, um, but better things is a better, I call it better days. The better things stars, this woman, it, um, basically she's a mother of three daughters and they never actually like she's in, she does voice acting there's a hint that she might do some type of skinamax porn like they don't really tell you exactly what her job is they just show you that she works in the industry they always show her like on set um you know at different shoots and they never give you the full explanation of what the hell is going on you just kind of see things and hear her talking to people and then it's about her, you know, raising her daughters and her daughters are off the fucking chain. And then her mother lives across the street. So they have that relationship. It's 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 kind of like this. It, it's kind of like Atlanta, not black like Atlanta, but 
kind of dark mm-hmm. comedy, a bit not really sure what's going on. You need to really be paying attention to conversation to pick up subtle hints of things and plot development mm-hmm. type of show. So I, th- I think that would interest you because just her interaction with the kids, like Ashley watches it. And just her interaction with the kids is funny because the kids are hilarious. Is she's is that is what they show like the preview like they'll show like yeah Martha. yes where she's screaming yeah. at her kids and shit yes mm-hmm. that's that's the yeah. show she does oh. a lot of she does a lot of character voice acting too she does because she does it on a couple of the episodes where they show her changing yeah. her voice up to do I mean she animation voice like voiceover she used to be uh um, she she was Bobby on King of the Hill oh okay okay like she did that for yeah well for long as King of the Hill ran she ran for that yeah. That's She's a good been show. On a bunch of stuff. That's yeah. So that's a good show. Y'all should check that out if you're like I miss Atlanta. Well, this is something else you might be interested in watching. Yeah. Um, but let's let's get to this. So, uh, we went through here. Uh, I want to talk about before we jump into the episode. I know everybody was like, "Can we just get to the fucking episode?" We gotta talk about some people first because this is the last one. Um, they did a condolences at the end, and yeah. it was for a young lady named Ashley Rose Favors. And it seems recently, and I mean recently, I mean like within the last week, it seems, or so. I'm not, when did this article come out? Yeah, like November 2nd. So she she died, no, she died on the 15th. My bad, she died on June 15th. Yeah, um, she passed away in a car accident, driving home from the set of the film she was working on. And the film she was working on was Jacob's Ladder. I guess it's a remake starring Michael Ely and Carla Sosa, Nicole Bahari, Jesse Williams. It's a is black it, is remake, it? is what it sounds like. I'm not. Jacob's, Jacob's Ladder. Sounds like a what? I feel like this is going to end up being like a romance story and not based on the original Jacob's Ladder, which is like crazy pseudo psycho shit. What is Jacob's Ladder? Like, that shit sounded so familiar, man. It's a, it, it's a, like a creepyish type film from back in the day. It's not. I don't see how they're blacking this up because it's a whole black cast I just named. It got to be, it got to be a different. It can't be the same. They said it's a reboot. Mourning his dead child, a hunted, a haunted Vietnam veteran attempts to discover his past while suffering from yeah, that's, a severe case. Yeah, that's it. A, <laughs> dissoci- a disassociation. Wow, and they're doing an all-black cast. Oh, this will be interesting. Do so he must decipher reality and life from his own. That is so Jacob's. Yep, yep. But, that's um pseudo psychopath shit. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, they got, they got. I will say they got good uh, actors from just the actors they listed. Jesse Williams, I'm still up in the air about as far as being a good actor. He's only had to play the same character on Grey's Anatomy forever. I've we'll never really seen him that. like in a film I do will, anything. I will give you that. I will give you that. But Michael Ely and uh, Nicole Michael Bahari, Ely yeah, act, I might, they're good actors. Michael Ely can act his, and I feel bad for Michael Ely because every time he get a TV show, that shit get canceled. Yeah, he can act but, so good with his eyes though. Like he just says it all. Nigga, even, even when wow, he drop them kids eyes, out the for window, real, for real, his eyes can be the softest type of things or they turn piercing and that nigga like I, bro when he, he wanted to shoot when he wanted to shoot old boy in barbershop but then he was like oh, yeah. giving less <laughs> giving uh advice to the african dude there was they was different eyes when they weren't the same the, eyes. Played, he played the serial killer on the uh fallen then he the wasn't he abusive in another movie like a couple years ago yeah the one he was hunting um he was hunting the old girl with yeah. uh so morris now- i ain't got yeah, they showed him hiding under the bed and shit. No, yeah, it was Sanaa Lathan. Yeah, was her? Yeah, I just know Morris. Look at my chest. Chestnut was there. Look at my chestnut. <laughs> <laughs> Morris, look at my chestnut. It's <laughs> not. Right, it ain't, it ain't never got a shirt off. Not doing this. Furnished. I feel like I feel like Morris Chestnut always got a, a topless baseball uh, basketball scene well he's got a show now net rosewood which is not a reboot so you don't have to you can and watch you know that what? and not that worry nigga about slavery. Have no shirt on and that shit. <laughs> he don't ever have a shirt on <laughs> i think they cast i feel like they cast morris morris uh what'd you call him morris no shirt on my uh, chestnut what'd you call him no shirt no, on I, chestnut. I like the porn name you gave him what is it? Morris see my chestnuts oh morris see my chestnuts yes he <laughs> uh <laughs> morris morris see my chestnuts I feel like they cast him for contrast because now they're just putting him in shows to be the dark figure standing next to a, a sexy white woman in silhouette. Like that's what they cast him for now. Do you see that black man right there? That's Morris. What's his name again? Yeah. Morris see my chestnuts. What's his name? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Morris, Morris see my chestnuts. Chestnut. 
So, um, yeah, that, I mean, they do what they do with them. But so Ashley, um, she died in a car accident. She was driving home from set and she was part of the Atlanta film community, which is why Donald Glover, a lot of people knew her. They paid tribute to her at the end of this episode. Uh, it, yeah, it's just sad. You said she was young, DJ. How young was she? Oh, sorry. Um, wow. <laughs> I do not know how young she was. Wow. No, she was like 23. Oh, yeah, she was young. She was like early 20s. Like, I, I Googled really fast. Um, yeah, she was super young. Hmm. So, it's, um, it's, um, nah, I can't say I was like, man. Sad. You know, Shonda Rhimes was doing this this Jacob Ladder movie. Shonda Rhimes, of course. That's why Jesse Williams is in it. There you go. Jesse Williams and Carla Carla Souza are two of hers. Her they mm-hmm. from um, How to Get Away from Murder, but she ain't in that. I was just looking. I don't see nothing with her in it. Carla Souza is they, in it. No, Carla Souza is in How to Get Away from Murder. I don't see anything with uh, with Shonda Rhimes. I mean. Oh, okay, okay. You was making sure she wasn't directing. No, nah, I was just looking. I mean, I wouldn't mm-hmm. mind you. I, I watch the show. Shit. I do not. I stopped watching. But anyway, Atlanta, we need to get back to this. We we just need to start a show podcast, what it sounds like, because we watch a whole bunch of shows. Don't talk about it. We do, uh, man. There's a lot of good shows out there. So, uh, boot. that's why we have the boo tube. We just don't put out a lot of boob tube episodes, except for Orange is the New Black, which is not happening anymore. I know y'all heard that. Sorry for your tears. So, listen. <laughs> At- torture. Atlanta, episode 10. Earn wakes up at noon. No. Nigga is a late sleeper. He's a late bloomer, a late sleeper. He wakes up being yelled at by a, a paper boy's roommate who does not recognize Alfred by his government name. He only recognizes him by the name paper boy. Was Which that is his a, roommate for real? Yes. A, his, his friend of his that had a that he, his house. I don't. I think that was his roommate because he said your roommate got mad at me. You mean fuck that roommate? Nigga. Alfred. I don't think. I don't think that was. No, I thought it's just them. T- it's Darius and um Paperboy that lived together. Man, I could have swore he said your roommate got mad at me. I, 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 the guy told the guy told. So what it sound like he said to Earn when, when he back. when Earn went walked out to talk to Paperboy, he said your roommate woke me up yelling at me. Maybe he said your boy what's the name woke me up yelling at me. Cause we fucked up his house. Yeah, because Paperboy and them still live in the same house. Didn't I got move? confused. I was like, man, is that is that his is this the roommate we don't never see? Cause yeah. that this show would do that in a heartbeat. Have a third roommate <laughs> that we just don't never see until <laughs> now. He the one to be keeping the I house mean, clean. That might be true. I just thought that I mean from like previous scenes, like when um Darius was playing the video games after the club, like it looked like the same house. They were all in the like, same, yeah. Yeah, even like later on where they're at the 420 couch, you know. They yeah, because he, yeah. Yeah, when he went to his uh, his dad, he was like, you know, asking for uh, his address. But when he asked him for the first episode, he was asking for Paperboy's address. I mean, yeah. And, I then, just... and then he, and that's how he got up to the house when, Paper, when he first met Paperboy. And Paperboy, you know, he I was like, you, nigga, you just want to get it on Paperboy. It was the same house. I'm just, I didn't see the front of this house. I only saw the inside. I don't know how big Paperboy's yeah, house is. I mean, yeah, it's two different houses because you know that they didn't have an upstairs. I didn't know. I only see them going to the kitchen. So I just assume because they never show like the whole house. They just show only with it, whatever room they're in. And since these niggas always getting high, they just always did in the kitchen or in the living room. I just call that nigga, that nigga is the black Charles Dickens. Yeah, it just looked like an older, like they look, they live, they look like they live in an older house. Mm hmm. So I, I, for me, it looked like that house that they were in, you know, where it got trashed was a different house. Yeah. Okay. Well, they fucked up the boy house. You know, he had to let Earn know. I mean, it's like I know y'all, but I don't really know y'all. I told y'all, man, he's the black Charles Dickens. It's like y'all my niggas. The times are the worst of times. But y'all ain't my niggas. It's like I'm cool with y'all, but I'm not but really cool, cool with y'all. y'all. It's like we down and shit, but we ain't really we down ain't and shit. <laughs> You know what's funny, man? Like, everybody had that argument with a friend, especially mm-hmm. after they do something to you. It's like, you know, you be, or you be at somebody's house, like, because you got invited with a friend. Right. And you be doing, you go a little bit too wild, and they be like, we ain't that cool, son. 
We cool, like, but right. we ain't that cool. You be like, you, be like, you right, you right, you right. Nigga, we blood, but a, we ain't friends and shit. It usually happened to black people jump when people start going in your refrigerator. Hey, nigga, I know you and shit, but I don't know you and shit. <laughs> you got my refrigerator. But uh, so he's complaining. This fool says somebody threw a beer in my brother picture. <laughs> yes, yes. I was trying to figure out how that gonna feel. <laughs> what? I was like, what? I said it's gonna come out water. I'm confused. Did, right? Did it filter <laughs> yeah, the beer that, out? Yeah, that, that boggled my brain. I said, huh? Like I got an old Brita filter in here, man. I might run a beer. Bro, we got a Brita filter right now, and I got a beer. If I could test it right here on the podcast, <laughs> I would. My man said somebody threw a beer. What was they filtering out? The alcohol? Like what were they doing? <laughs> Maybe it was trying to maybe because you know it was cheap beer. They probably was trying to fence her, out the gross. get the piss yeah, out. You can do that with they, you know people say you you can do that with uh with like liquor. Oh yeah, this is done with that vodka. with vodka. Mm-hmm. You can do what? Myth. You can filter it and make it taste better. Mythbusters did it. You can mm-hmm. filter vodka. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Filter what it, you filter now? Like, and make it like cheap vodka. And make it oh. make it closer to a uh, top shelf. Oh, oh, the niggas shit. I'm gonna be trying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mythbusters did it, and they actually had a renowned vodka tester come, and he mm. literally lined them, and he blind tested them, and he literally by just taste he lined them all up, and he had, and they had them all by they had the the bottom shelf vodka, and then how, he had it directly in order on how many times it was filtered, all the way up to it was filtered the most to top shelf vodka. Mm. So it actually works. I'm gonna have to try this now on some cheap ass sky vodka or some shit. Uh, we'll, I'll let y'all know how that goes. So, uh, while Ern is having this conversation with this friend or whoever, his nigga, but not his nigga, the girl on the couch, and she looked hungry. She just looked hungry. Uh, she had the socks. I got I got those slippers at the house right now. She? The quintessential black band slippers. <laughs> I just love her comment, man. She was like, can we hurry up and get some food? I'm like dying. <laughs> That's a real line, though. She ain't turn away from a TV. You see how, like, as soon as that happened, like, Ern didn't have to have any more conversation. They both had to look with each other, like, I'm gonna need to feed her right now. Yeah, Ern was <laughs> like, I understand, bro. Did, did she this. have her hair wrapped up too? Yeah, you could, on? she I'm was. Like, she was real close dang. between getting. I just see my girl do that. I call we call her the beast when she get hungry. Like, all right, we need it. I mean, she legit won't even help him clean. She was sprawled out on the thing. couch, listening to him complain and walk around and clean up shit and get his house straight. And he walked past her and she was like, "Fuck y'all conversation." Can we get some food? Because I'm like I mean, hungry. because I can't work unless I'm hung- unless I'm yeah. fed. That, See, that, that, that them, them excuses. No, you know she ain't working after she get fed. She gonna go to sleep right there on that couch. Well, you know, you take that risk, but we need to go get something. She gonna fall asleep like Regina King and Friday with her hand right up under her neck holding her head up. <laughs> Same way she was sitting. Yeah, so her head don't get messed up. Yeah. Oh my god, I used to do that back in the day. <laughs> so Ern left and uh he starts walking up the street. He's really trying to find his jacket, it's a blue bomber or whatever. It's got a seal on it. We, we, we got a patch. Got a got seal a on the front. Um we learn later when he's talking to the ATL PD, Atlanta PD, he it's got a secret hey, front PD. pocket. Got a secret pocket. Secret in the front. secret secret pocket in the front. Um he starts seeing people in uh black and white spotted Cow suits. Oh yeah, that's uh, that reminds me of Chick Fil A. No, yeah, it definitely Chick-fil-A. was Chick Fil A. Yeah, you get you that. Remind you, 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 you of Chick Fil A. It was Chick Fil A. Just like a cow, you get a free sandwich. Uh-huh. That was the eat more chicken ad for sure. Like when he's C H I K chicken. Cow Appreciation chicken. Day. Yes, that's what it is. You can get a calendar and everything, man. Get your uh-huh. cow calendar. He uh he walked past. He's, he he doesn't notice for at first. Then he starts noticing it. He's not on a set of a Chicken Filet commercial. It's just <laughs> people just look like this. I said Chicken Filet, Chick Fil A, and dude randomly walks past him, and all this dude had on was a cow mask, and he said, "Free chicken sandwich day, nigga." <laughs> <laughs> Which I feel like is the only way you should announce free chicken sandwich day from Chick Fil A. Right. <laughs> Ern stopped and got him a chicken sandwich. I don't know if y'all noticed that. Yes, it yes. is. Yes. We, don't look, we don't know. Wow. 
We don't know whose shirt he borrowed. <laughs> we don't know what type of cow. He just had some cow glass of shades he borrowed from somebody to get his chicken sandwich. But he got his chicken sandwich. He finished that sandwich on the way to the club, a uh, gold rush <laughs> showroom, and he tossed it into the, the can before he walked up to the doorman. Doorman, listen, security guards are so... They are like the best special forces hires. Because if you give them an objective, they will only stick to that objective. There will be no wavering. There will be no no uh, 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 moral issue. They will not judge the context. They will just do it. He doesn't even get all the way to the door. And the fucking the bouncer yelled at him, you owe me $10, man. And just started patting him down in the middle of the day. At eleven o'clock in the hey, afternoon, hey man, or in the morning, strip clubs, strip clubs never close. They don't in Atlanta. They don't, from what I heard. They close they here. They don't. I mean, they don't you close know, Atlanta. you can eat you eat lunch at the strip club. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Did, did Some you people got, do. Did you brunch. got the night. You got the third shift when they get off. Mm-hmm. You got they brunch. Strip club. Mm-hmm. You can do that. You can get your chicken and waffles for brunch. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know. And the strip club serves delicious food. Mm-hmm. And you know where they were at the Gold Rush, off the on, on uh, South Side. That that that's a well. That's a nice establishment. Mm-hmm. Look like it. So um, <laughs> trip clubs don't look the same in the day as as at night. Okay, they look like abandoned hood houses. I'm just saying, they all, they all look the same during the day. All strip hey, clubs look the, abandoned the during inside. the day. They it's don't look all good. the same. That's the all that matters. All you will never know what time it is in a strip club. Nope. nope. You surely don't. <laughs> it's just perpetually. Black dark. lights everywhere. Mm-hmm. Black lights and booty. <laughs> Black light booties and boobies. That's and pretty you much can all get, it is. You, know, you can get a, a steak for like. Mm-hmm. Keep talking um, about this food. So um, he it's so good. He asked old boy to check for him, and he did the nigga shit that I knew he was gonna do. He opened that door, put his head in, and said, "I don't see it." And pulled his <laughs> head back out, and Earl was like, "Come on, man, I need my coat." So he walked in, and and this time I legit, I feel like he legit went to Lost and Found to check and see if it was a jacket there because the strip club got like, Lost went, and Found. He went, he went straight to Lost and Found. Yeah, he didn't even look all over the club because you know they good about picking shit up and putting it in Lost and Found. Niggas, you know niggas lose shit in the strip club. Rings, toupees, money clips, shit like that that they use, and they come back and get it the next day on their lunch break, and then they order a steak, like Deidre said. So dude comes back out and he's like, nah, man, I don't see it. And it was a genuine, nah, man, I don't see it for real though. I looked, it ain't, yeah. it ain't there. Yeah. But plus, you know, he gotta be, he gotta make sure. Yeah. Cause people will try to get in and see some free titties. Of course. You know, so he like, you know what, this, I'll go look for that. By the you way, know, that, I, we ain't about to, we ain't about to do, you, know, you ain't about to have no free cursor, you know, cursory search. Now nah, you gotta pay for, for the boobies. Shit. You gotta pay for the boobies, so yeah, I paid a couple charges. Yeah, cash and boobies, but um, mm-hmm. I'm not sure if anybody had been looking for some booty or some titty this uh, this whole season. Uh, if you paid attention in the background, I'm pretty sure that girl that was dancing did not have a bra. On. I'm about two hundred percent sure she, she, she did not have a bra. On. I don't know what she. She had bottoms on. I don't think she had a bra on now. There's a chick no, dancing on the no pole. Bra. I'm pretty sure she didn't have a bra. So there you go. There are your titties. Uh, there's your players club moment. Titties. There's, there goes your nudity. Remember That's what you said needed to see. Would be in this one. There, there you it go. Goes. Yeah, look deeper than the deep and see them titties. <laughs> so he walks in and instantly, uh, young yellow bone thing <laughs> is like, "Hey, you was with Paperboy, won't you?" She been, so she, she been answer for a dance first. Well, she she yeah. did <laughs> as soon she as he did. walked in the door. I mean, that's that's protocol. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> he walked past and said, "No, I'm looking for my jacket. I was here last night." Oh, you was with Paperboy. Yeah. And Everybody she saw her golden opportunity to become a video hoe. Or video, I'm sorry, video. I'm sorry, video vixen. Video <laughs> video vixen. Yes, video vixen. Video vixen. And uh, this is this is her interview, interview time. So she like, let me help you so you can remember me. Call me when y'all shoot y'all first strip club video. Right. Y'all need a video? Hey, babe, look. You gotta come out here. You gotta network. She just assumed I mean, they was doing know, a music video. At this point, you, gotta, you know, you gotta network. You gotta network. Paperboy is like Atlanta's fi- you know, finest right now. Like you know, he's okay. riding high. Right. He been on Montague, played basketball with Justin Bieber. 
The black Justin Bieber. No, Justin Bieber. In this world, that is Justin he just Bieber. Justin Bieber. Yeah, there's no black <laughs> Justin Bieber. He is the Justin Bieber. <laughs> so um, she says, y'all need a girl for your music video. And he's like, um, you know, I really just need to find my jacket right now. Like, they made the questions I'm trying to answer. When I'm trying to find my jacket, I just woke up. And I, I had a delicious chicken sandwich. So he says, the girl who danced on me last night might have it. And this is where we get what I feel to be a real conversation you can have in a strip club with a stripper about finding somebody. <laughs> um, if all you remember is that the girl in the black strip club had blonde hair, you shit out of luck, sir. That, yeah, that's like default. Yeah, you might as well walk into a school in Atlanta and be like one of the black kids. Okay, well, what did he look like? He looked like a black kid. He had brown she skin. Was like, how big were her titties? And he, he was like, he was like, they, they were kind of big, but not big, like big, big. big. <laughs> you know, they, they were, it was kind of like her. Nigga, those ain't big titties. <laughs> I don't know the median to uh, titties. Yeah, see, I don't know the titty like, median. Regular life titties, those might have been big, but strip club titties. They, you know, it's a high echelon. And right. In real talk, the girl that walked past that he pointed out that her, she did have big titties. She did not have small titties. No, she did not. So <laughs> that, she that didn't have big, big titties. Right. right. Big, big titties. Big old bigums. You know, she didn't, she didn't have them, them, them EFs. I just love how the conversation went. It was like, was she, was she brown skin or high yellow? She was light skinned, but she wasn't like super light skinned. Like like super light skinned. <laughs> she thick or skinny? She, like I like the way she, he answered. She, she, she was, was thick. thick. She was thick. She was thick. <laughs> uh, that's the one thing he was sure on. Like, big he wasn't titties. Sure of shit else. Right. He was sure she was thick. She was thick. He was like he was like, do she got blonde? She got blonde hair. Is it shoulder length or long? Is it short or shoulder length? And he was like, it's kind of shoulder length. Mm, I don't know her. Okay. Then she jumped into the yellow skinny. Then she was like tall with a fat ass. I kind of tall, you know. I just, I guess, like, yeah. Mm hmm. Well, I've been working here for two years and I ain't never seen nobody like that. <laughs> like, and she was legit. She wasn't trying to shade him. She wasn't trying to carry that nigga. Like, they would literally describe it. And she was playing mental guess who with all the strippers. She was. <laughs> She went she through all there, of like, them. Score top, mm, I'm a, not that one, not that one. Mm. It won't charity. Mm -mm. She went through Diamond, <laughs> Ruby, Pearl, Gemstone. She went through all of them. Not Gemstone. <laughs> well, mm -mm. when you run out of Diamonds, you might as well just take the class name. Mm -mm. Won't Brittany, Tammy, Tiffany. Mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. Keisha. Nikki, Nicole, Nicholas. Yep. Nope, none of them. Whoa, whoa. Oh, none of them, man. Yeah. Taina. Mm -mm. Not Taina. No. <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm. Not Taina. Yep. Oh, Lord. Mm -mm. No joy. <laughs> mm -mm. None of them. It could have been Rainbow. It might. Nah, nah, not her. Not her. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it was a rain. Might have been Sunshine. It wasn't. I don't know if it was Rainbow. No Sunshine Robin. sounds like blonde hair. No Robin. No nothing. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, no joy or Ajax. I don't know. Not eight, like the cleaning <laughs> they like clean <laughs> Yeah, no, no, um, no comment. <laughs> no, yeah, no comment. Um, no Lexus. No, no, da no, no dash and no blitzes. Mm -hmm. None of them. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no Lexus. No Hyundai. No Kia. None of them. None mm -hmm. of them. None of them. Mm -mm. Was it Mercedes? No, 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 no Mercedes. No Lexus. Mm -mm. No, no, okay. Yeah. You sure yeah. I want Mercedes? Because you know she she kind of thick thick. Mm -mm. Nope. So, um, anyway, he leaves and he decides, shit, Paperboy Snapchat it last night. Let me check my phone. Let me check social media. He nigga. pulls up like, the Snapchat and he literally Snapchatted the whole night. And yet, everything. I'm not going to, I'm not asking for an explanation here. Okay. I'm just saying, I still don't understand how Snapchat works. Like, I don't understand it. I get it. But I don't understand you know it. What the purpose is? I don't get right. I don't it's like Instagram, but it's not Instagram. Like I don't get it. It just doesn't make sense to me. Cause this, you know, I think cause after a certain time frame, the video disappears. It's like a day or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then also you can make like Snapchat stories. So like Instagram, you can make one long video. But Snapchat I could take when we walk in the club. We walk and I, I can give you a whole story of the whole night, and in in a and like 
four or five video. So videos. it's like so it's like story five, but with video and photos. Kind of, yeah. even though you, you can, can add snap, video and yeah. photos to story five. Snapchat, yeah. You can do a Snapchat picture, but a lot of people do do uh, Snapchat stories. So I'm gonna play like, around with know, it so one the day. First thing, so like you you hit the thing and you see, oh, are we about to go to the club. Boom, we in the car chilling, going to the club. The Uber's here. Mm-hmm. We just got to the strip club. You just have all those little videos, and so you get a whole story of what's of what's going on. All right, well. But at the end of the day, it's gone. And it's gone. After right, there's gone. a lot of work, a lot of video editing work for it to be gone in the day. But yeah, practice practice makes perfect. So a Snapchat, the first thing we see is a uh, titties and bitties and titties, and that's them going to the strip club or going to one of the clubs. I, I, I ain't got that yet. I don't think it was a strip club. I think it was just a spot. I don't think they get yeah, right. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, they got the Uber to the strip club, right? Which they called the uh, limo limo to the strip club, which was an Uber. It was not a limo to the strip club. It was a fucking Uber SUV that uh, Fidel Arroyo was driving. But we'll get to that later. He keeps filming uh, Darius, and Darius is like, he doesn't like to be filmed because Darius got one of the more Indian or Native American <laughs> type of mentalities when it comes to taking <laughs> pictures of people and filming them and shit that the, the eyes are the windows to the soul, and if you photograph or film someone, you are still in their soul and trapping it within that image. <laughs> it's how Darius oh, feels. Wonderful. Is that really Native American? I feel like it's not, but maybe it is. I feel like they, they, they may have reacted they, they to the first camera a lot right now. We're not going to attribute that to them. I feel like right they may now. have acted like that towards the first camera, maybe. But I don't feel I like feel they like do a lot it of today. Act like that to the first camera, right? Because <laughs> there was the first camera was literally an explosion happened in front of your face. Yep. And so you're looking to the pupils, funny. people. I love but the yeah, fact like, they'd be like, like if, the first uh, time he didn't even say anything. The first time he looked at him, he's he like, no nah, man. Thing up there to say he don't. My man don't let it be filled, and there's just staring at him. Like there's this say that he just stared at him like was leaning backwards, and then the second one there's like man, it, it, you know that should take your soul, man. He said, "No, come on, man, for real, for real, man, it takes your soul and stuff, man. You don't understand." <laughs> so uh, Darius is really high. They them singing them songs in the car though. They were singing "Ride oh, with Me" first. Ride with me. And he throw every word. <laughs> Earn knew every word, but then before he started saying every word, somebody said, "This is Beyonce's best song." I don't yeah, know who it was serious. that said yeah. that. <laughs> Paperboy looks fat, like, <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was funny. Yeah, this is Beyonce's best song. Um, okay, then they get in the they, strip they, club they, and they, you kind of see Ja Rule song too. They just said that nigga was barking. They just started barking at Earn really high. I was talking about some. What if we found out Ja Rule was just a dog, like a barking dog? <laughs> that's that's high as fuck. So they get to the strip yeah, club no, high no, as fuck. I, drink, I love it. And um, Ern has got the stripper dancing on him, which he could have shown old girl in the club the video, and maybe she would have recognized that ass, but whatever. And he's like the turn up dance or whatnot. And I'm wondering if they make a reference to him dropping his key on the ground. Because there was a point where the fucking camera looks down at the carpet and there's like this white thing on the carpet. Really? Right. But I couldn't tell if that was his key he dropped and maybe that was the point at the night where he gave the key to his friend, to the to Swift. Yeah to hold on to it but i'm not sure i'm kind of i'm just throwing that out there after watching it four times that might be because i mean it was kind of random like i was like well how did like the camera just know? fell to the ground for some reason it was like oh and, and they looked at it and then it cut to another scene and i was like was that his key on the ground yo i mean they just swift said he outsmarted himself again <laughs> which he did that was yeah Cause Swift won't fuck hey, up. That we, that we supposed to do though, man. That's that's the shit you supposed to. Yeah, Swift was cool when he uh when he got the ride from his baby mama uh cousin. He was yeah, cool. The Swift. We never saw Swift after that though. We saw, and, the Swift. The Swift make it back to the to the, the club. Yeah, we. I mean, we saw Swift the next day when he gave Ern the key back. No, no, no. I said the Swift make it before before they got to the Uber to go to the strip club. They were like Swift about to get in. And then Swift was like, "Oh no, man, I'm gonna get a ride with like my with my baby mama, something like that." I was like, "Did that nigga ever get to the strip club with them?" Because I don't remember seeing him in the strip. He club probably videos. did. I mean, I assume he did. He probably did. Yeah, I assume he made it. No, I don't. I don't feel like Just Swift know, is a person that turns down. That's probably gonna be the last time we see Swift. I don't. I don't feel. Like, I don't feel like Swift is a person that turns down strip club opportunities. So. No, yeah. like the the actual person. I don't think so. I think he'll be back next no, season. No, no, no. Why? Oh, no, no. no, he got in trouble. 
Yeah. Some real life. Was it some child shit or some abuse shit? What was it? Some rape shit? What? Uh, some. Um. Wait, I'm gonna find it. Cause I want to give y'all the. And it happened right here in good old uh, uh, Gwinnett County. Um, um, I think he got caught with like a 14 year old. And by Swift. Wait, let me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, we don't need it. We don't even need to dwell on that. He's done. Um, next scene. <laughs> and like, yeah, like it happened. Apparently, this happened. I haven't found the um, full interview yet, but um, apparently, it happened a while ago, like maybe like a year or two ago. Mm-hmm. And he kind of ducked and dodged it, but I think it finally went to trial. Mm. And well, died. Um, see you, nigga. That was swift. All right, so. <laughs> <laughs> we they um Earl meets up with Paperboy and of course they had their four twenty moment even though it's noon they four twenty and noon and well it's, I guess it's later than noon because he'd have been a couple of places uh they get into a conversation he's kind of like I'm thank y'all for waking me up and they, Darius didn't get the sarcasm because he said you're welcome and. Oh, he said thank. He said thank. I want to thank y'all for not waking me up. But Darius was like, "You're welcome, yo." He's like, "Y'all let me sleep till noon and shit." <laughs> Darius did not get the sarcasm at all. No, nah, he completely <laughs> fucking like, missed welcome. it. Yeah, he don't. He completely he's missed like, it. Y'all wake, he, he, no, he said, "We well, said like, we didn't." Like, we he said, didn't "You're wake welcome." You up. <laughs> I know. For waking me up, he was like, "We didn't." <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> um, they start having a conversation, and Paperboy is talking about. He's like, you know, there's like I lost my jacket. I'm looking for my jacket, and I noticed that you Snapchatted every the whole night last night. And Paperboy's like, yeah, you know, we got that's what we supposed to be doing this rap shit. Get everything out to the world. Get the people what they want. Get this uh, marketing going. You know what I'm saying? We need to start stunting more. And Darius goes into his whole, um, no, that stunting is like a trap. <laughs> so we we probably need to make more money first before we start stunting and shit. And Darius and Paperboy's like, oh, here he go, being all logical and shit. Won't let us stunt. Darius comes in with the, this is black people's number one problem. Not being unfun. <laughs> not not knowing how to have fun. Which we all agree here, right? It's not black people's number one problem, right? That's far right. from being a nigga's number one problem in this country. Not being able to have some fun. Uh, we have a lot of fun. Sometimes we don't make it home. And that's not our fault. That typically would be closer to our number one problem. But since that's a symptom, we won't even go into that. Darius has an extremely high moment. <laughs> an extremely high moment when this fool says, man, because, you know, niggas don't know how to have fun. Like, if we spend the time we spend thinking about not spending money, spent that time on spending money, then it'd be time well spent. That nigga came full circle and it was great. I don't know who wrote that, but you have been around a lot of high people. You might actually be the high person. Oh, that shit went full circle and it was great, man. Like he just, that'd be time well spent. Uh. God, that shit was high. Oh. That shit sound like a Wiz Khalifa Kendrick Lamar bar. That, that shit, shit so resonated high. with you. That's but it said nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> and he knew it said nothing because after he said it, he looked like a dog that just farted and didn't realize the fart came from him. <laughs> the hell is that sound? Yeah. And he just went back to smoking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Paperboy, I mean, um, Aaron has to borrow Paperboy's phone so he can get the Uber perch so he can call the Uber dude, Fidel, from last night. Who they have nicknamed F Money. They spend a lot of time in Fidel's car, it sounds like. They, they name they getting a man a nickname and everything. Uh when he gets his phone, Paperboy is like, don't be flipping through my photos. This nigga Paperboy always worried about some shit, yo. Man, delete my number from your phone, girl. You reckless. <laughs> man, don't be flipping through my photos. <laughs> he always worried about some shit, girl. Hey, so we, she, she, was, she was she was reckless though. That shit was reckless. <laughs> she was reckless as fuck. She called a nigga first all over the phone. Girl, you don't, it. girl, you know yeah. I don't do that. Delete my name from your phone. You reckless. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking reckless. 
All of that in one sentence, yo. He he gave her the whole breakdown in one sentence in that text message. That shit was great. Um, now, and this is one of the I I I recommend if you are a fan of this show that you go back and you watch it with the closed caption on, because there's so many conversations that you might miss because there are other conversations going on, but the closed caption picks them up. Okay. While yeah, Ern is start doing that. While Ern is on the phone talking to Fidel to find out if Fidel has his jacket and Fidel does have his jacket, and he's trying to figure out how he can get the jacket. Darius is having a high fucking conversation with Paperboy about the manufacturing of sunflower seeds. And he says, uh, he says, yo, man. Speaking of speaking of which, how do you think these sunflower seeds make so much money? These ba- this bag only costs like seventy five cent. What? <laughs> and then later he says, "Yeah, man, they 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 got they they no." He says, "Um, now they coming out with all these different flavors: barbecue, teriyaki, sushi, catfish." And that proceeds to go into a conversation where Darius is saying that he can't eat the catfish ones, not the catfish ones. He can't eat the sushi flavored sunflower seeds because he feels like they doing some dirty shit with sushi to get it into the sunflower seed. Right. (laughs) And paper, and paper, and paper boy is like, man, no, that's artificial flavor. Dog. It's not real sushi. (laughs) And Darius is like, for real, man? It's not real sushi? And he's like, nope, artificial. Yeah, you thought you gonna crack the shell open and sushi was gonna come out? Yes, like, so, and if you think I'm lying, go back and watch the episode and turn the closed <laughs> caption on, because that's really the only way you can fully hear the conversation. Like, because they're they're talking in the background, even though they're in the foreground of the shot. Is Earn that, is actually in the background. He's like, look, like... Basically, when he's waiting on the phone. Like, while, Earn's yeah. Calling. Yeah, while Earn is on the phone in the background, talking to Fidel... Oh, Darius and Paperboy are having a conversation in the foreground on the couch, but it's lower volume than Darius's than Earn's conversation. And, and a lot of Earn conversation is quiet anyway. Like right. Which, and that's on purpose because that's when you can hear them talking about the sunflower seeds. <laughs> like, I'm about to go back, man, and really focus on that. Yes, you know? because he said catfish. Yes. What did he? He said catfish was a flavor. Wow. <laughs> So they decide. Yeah, so um, I don't have to redo that. Oh lord, that's so funny. So the uh, Aaron comes back after using his phone, tosses his phone to paperboy. He's like, "Hey man, Fidel, the Uber driver Fidel got my jacket, but he charged me fifty dollars to drive down here and drop it off. So man, can you give me a ride?" And that's when that's when we find out they nicknamed this man F Money. And paperboy is like, "Ooh, these Uber niggas is ruthless." there is like yo man i'm Aaron is like come on man can you you know i really need this favor and paper boy is like oh man i hate those words i I don't like the the sounds (laughs) and we gotta come on let's bail this nigga out again Aaron's like you ain't bailed me out when i was in jail you ain't bailed me (laughs) (laughs) when i needed this when i need you to bail me out you ain't bailed me out which you didn't and it was like while we going there we can stop at the jamaican joint and this and this is how listen this is how because i know y'all heard this part uh darius is is singing a song about the curry goat and he's talking in jamaica he's like that curry yeah, goat that yeah, curry yeah. goat he said, he said how they catch the curry exactly <laughs> that that conversation basically is a spin off from the sunflower seed conversations where he's like how do they get the sushi wow. into the sunflower seeds he's like, how they catch the goat and then with this one he's like i wonder how they catch the goats <laughs> Uh, so we come back and they all eating curry in the car guess they caught the goats and Ern gets a call from senator k and he's basically telling them i don't know if you met him at the club and they exchange information or if he just got Ern's information from a site or whatever he reached out to him but basically senator k is like yo um i want to go on tour and i want paperboy to come with me y'all need to come to chicago so i'm wondering if next season of atlanta is might be the next gonna step. be in Chicago. Right. Be a part of it, you know, just seeing the next step. Yeah, I think that would be interesting though, right? To see niggas come oh. from they from Atlanta to the Chicago scene 
of music yeah. or yeah oh. or you know because you can do that or you can just do it where you know they coming back to atlanta after that tour so you know you got this you coming back to your hometown but you got this new found success but maybe coming back I, home i think still seen as i like that nigga. but i definitely want to see the tour and i want to see them would, show up in chicago yeah i want to see the interactions yeah i want to see them go to chicago and start touring in chicago because i know that shit is ridiculous like I know that with, tour and life with is the ridiculous, music, and with the music scene up there, it'll be cool. It'd be really dope. So, um, yeah, he gets off the phone with uh, Senator K, and the whole time, Paperboy is in a passion seat, like something ain't right, cause ain't no kids outside, there ain't no birds chirping, ain't no neighbors walking, like ain't it's nobody, nobody on there. The it's just a dead zone. One of no cars, one of no cars coming up and down the street. Basically, he he know what a sting feel like. He sells drugs. He's yeah, like, this ain't right. Had a feeling. He's like, man. Yeah, he said something ain't feel, right, man. Don't yeah. feel right, man. He don't feel right. He starts the car to drive off, and eight every car that's in the cul-de-sac turns and faces them and pulls forward. Every, every hey, car. Tr- I don't even know where the damn SWAT truck came Nigga, from. Nigga, th- when the police do that, listen, we found a bike on campus one time, a bicycle, in the middle of campus. All right, in the dark at night. We was like, damn, whose bike is this? And the bike was on the ground. We was like, well, shit, don't leave it here. Just put it in a bike rack or something. Nigga, we picked it up to walk into the bike rack. Out of nowhere, a police car came, just rolled up on it, just out of the darkness. <laughs> it just fell out of the sky and rolled up on us. And we was like, oh, shit, what the hell is, what the hell is this? We was like, these niggas setting bicycle traps. What the, what the <laughs> fuck is this? <laughs> the fuck was this a bike thing? A bike sting? <laughs> them not our gears. Them not our gears. <laughs> we didn't do it. But cops be doing that shit though. We just gonna leave money out here. You took the money. What nigga is just on the ground? Twan, like, I promise like, you the cop car came out of nowhere though. Like Twan, I was over by Constant building, okay? Yeah. You can see everything. Are you like on the on the campus side? We was, I wasn't by Constant. I was by the math building. So I was between the engineering building and the math building. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Walking back towards, like, towards the library and the English building, that little middle part between the math building and the engineering yeah, building. Yeah, where, where it's the, a yeah, bike rack the, uh... right there. We was picking up the bike <laughs> to put it in the bike rack, and we looked over to the emblem in the, in the ground on ODU, and the cop came flying across there. We was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> wow. Cop came out of the shadows like Ghost Rider. We was like, "What the fuck is this?" Not Ghost Rider. <laughs> so yeah, don't don't. Uh, if it don't feel right, it ain't right. The paper boy felt it won't right, or was it? Jesus, something ain't right, man. Atlanta PD pulled up eight cars, seven hundred yeah, officers. He came like rolling in. Everybody was looking for Fidel that day. He must have called in a bomb threat to the Senate because they had everybody, every cop in Atlanta. He must have called in a triple nine. That Fidel did some real shit. I don't know what Fidel did. He did because they didn't shoot him in the back once. They shot him in the back like four times. They only I mean, shot they, him in the yeah, back. Yeah, they made sure they he was R.I.P. They didn't try to chase that motherfucker. Nope. Like not one person like, ran like, after him. They, like he, it won't like Fidel did not run at them. Fidel ran, ran away, away. Mm-hmm. and they just shot that nigga. Fidel won't be his shit either. Him. They could have easily tackled that small man to the ground. They lit no, his they back up. They had enough people. Like I mean, like. Every time I hear stuff, I see stuff like that, and people are like, well, why they got to chase? I said, nigga, that's what the whole show Cops is about. <laughs> Motherfuckers chasing other motherfuckers here's, over Here's my thing. Shit. How did they have so many cops there for a stakeout and not have the area blocked off so nobody could just run from behind a house out of the neighborhood? Because that's exactly what Fidel was going to do. He was going to sneak around the house and run out of the neighborhood. I feel like that yeah, just should not be possible like, with that many didn't cops. That's why you have to shoot him, because y'all had every, y'all had every piece. Like covered, but clearly not because he was getting away. <laughs> but I think the only reason he was getting away is because they wasn't chasing him, right? And he thought he could just sneak away because everybody was, you know, looking at them. Situation was so fucking weird. First, they shot him up like that, and Paperboy's first response was, "Damn, did y'all need all them? Bu- did y'all really need all them bullets? Need all them bullets, <laughs> right?" And when Fidel came sneaking around the house, and Ern was like, "Blue bomber, that's my yo yo, my jacket." Uh, fucking, fucking yeah. Darius was like he f, f like money. <laughs> he was like <laughs> Darius said f money, and then he came sneaking around the house, and they shot his ass. The cops shoot. I mean, they shot this man dead. They put 
five or six they, bullets in his back. Yeah, they. It was. I don't. Was, I don't remember them bitches saying "freeze, stop." No, they said "stop him." That's all they. They said yeah. "stop that him." That nigga turned around like nobody went to chase that nigga. That, they didn't they, say police that nigga stop. Ran and they shot. They didn't say police stop or anything like that. Freeze. They said stop him. Okay. Yeah. They shot his ass and up. They, they, they stopped the bullet, that nigga. Yeah, I was gonna say the bullet stopped him. That's what they wanted. So the woman comes out the house and you can hear the baby crying. The cop motions to the woman and goes, It's okay, everything's good. Cause she runs out and she yells, Get up, get up to Fidel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the cop motions to her and says, Uh, everything's gonna be okay, ma'am. What? No, 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 it's no, no, it's not. No, it's not. Stop moving. It's not gonna like, be okay. Yeah, that, nigga, that nigga is dead. Everything's under control. Everything's gonna be okay, man. Um, dead. Yo, you just you probably just shot that child's father in the back four oh, yeah. times. He's an Uber driver. You ain't, you ain't trying to chase that nigga. Was he like, most just... wanted in Atlanta? Like, what was going on right now? What is this? I don't Please think y'all really to... wanted him if you shot him dead like that. Police don't have to. Uh, they don't have to pass that physical fitness test no more. Nope, because they don't have they to just run. shoot niggas. Bullets <laughs> is faster like... than legs. So, um, uh, Ern walks up to him and Ern is like, uh, "Hey man, can you check?" Nigga, the way Ern slid up yeah. beside that cop, <laughs> nigga, because Darius and Paper Boy was still in the back. Yeah, they, they were still in the back by the car, and Darius, I mean, uh, Ern came up there like he was another cop. <laughs> just standing beside the cop like hey man can you uh can you check his pockets he he literally just said can you check his pockets and the cop and the looked, other, they listen, all look at him like the cops look they just shot a man in the back like five times okay <laughs> they looked at her at urn like he was the one that was doing too much that was like nigga are you ridiculous why would we check this dead man's pockets you see what situation is happening here right now why are you and it, the, the look also was like why are you, you in my this space right now? Like, right, like, yeah. how you get this close? He couldn't even. Do you see what's going on right now? Why are you in my space? Like, he, <laughs> he couldn't even fucking get the cop to like radio to check the pockets. The cop was so busy staring at him mouth agape that Ern <laughs> decided to just ask the cop to check check his his pocket. Can you check his? Just lean over. Check the pockets. Like, can you check the pocket? Can you check the? I, 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 just the po- The pocket. Can you? Can you? Yeah, I had, some, I had some important in there. So dude, che- dude checks the pockets while looking at Ern the whole time. He's like, "There's nothing in here." Oh, oh, if you don't okay. Get your ass away from okay. me. That's that. That was that look. And then he comes back. Like, there's a there's a secret front pocket actually. Okay. <laughs> that's that's my jacket. That's my yeah, jacket. People look at him like nigga, move. Like right. So uh, yeah, no luck here. Ern is upset. Um, they're riding in the car. And Ern says, uh, Paperboy is kind of like, man, straight, you know. Sorry about the jacket, man. That shit was kind of cool, though, right? And Darius is like, yeah, it was cool. And then Ern is like, it's cool, man. I'm not even I'm not even upset about the jacket. Which, I mean, that's basically foreshadowing that whatever was in the yeah, jacket that, was more important than what he the jacket. There was something in the jacket. And I kept right. thinking it was his money. Like I kept right. thinking he lost yeah. a lot of money. But, That's what I thought too. But then I was like, it can't be money because Ern, Paperboy doesn't know anything about this money. And the last time Ern lost some money, like Paperboy knew he lost some money. Paperboy should have known if it's a lot of money. Pa- Paperboy would know that it's missing. Like, so it must not be money. I'm thinking maybe it's like a picture of the baby or it's something like having to do with the family that's what i'm thinking like it's got to be something between him and vanessa that he lost that's really important because at first i was thinking maybe she gave him the jacket and that's why he's tripping so he gets yeah, out of the car the entire time i thought it was money but well that got extinguished quick because when he gets out of the car paper boy tosses him a roll uh-huh. and um he's like yo what's this for and Ern ain't even been asking for money the whole time he's been collecting money Cause for that roll, for that to be five percent, them boys was making a killing. Yep. I mean, but look, even look when they went to the club scene. Five thousand. But he took more than that. that shit. <laughs> he took what was. Took more, that nigga took they, that man gave him everything. <laughs> he's, well, he he he's, when he gave it to him, he said, "Here, it's all here, here." Yeah. So, I mean, that, that probably meant it's all here, all my money. Everything I made tonight, yeah, it's 5%. <laughs> so, 
Five fucking that was, percent. That was a that was a great scene between the two of them because it was almost the exact it was almost the exact scene very similar to the scene when he was first talking to uh, Paperboy about being his manager. It's the flip of the be- it's a play on the beginning yeah. like it's the reciprocal of the beginning. Yeah. But you know, could they could they were still standing on both sides of the car, mm-hmm. looking at each mm-hmm. other, and he was like, when he was like, I think because well, uh, Alfred was like, I don't really trust you, like that, because it was after that they Alfred got in the car and went to talk to Ernest's dad to ask yeah. him about it. But they were still sitting on the other side of the car talking to each other like that. Mm-hmm. So then you had that scene now where he was giving him the money, and it was just like, hey He's, man, good work you. He said you did you good. Know, Say so you did good. Yeah, you, did, uh-huh. you did every you did everything you gonna say. And it was like, you know, that it was just that it was one of those things where the scene and them just look at each other said a lot more than the words. Mm-hmm. To me it felt like the end of Friday. It felt like when Craig was talking to his dad and his dad was like, you know, you did the right thing. Fight's over. You killed Debo with a brick. It's all good now. We can all go in the house now. We saved the neighborhood. That's what it felt like. You did good, man. End of the movie. Well, in the background, Darius is high as fuck because he ate two blunts when the cops came. <laughs> nigga. Quick, too. Quick, too, nigga. He was quick. He had to get them things down. Yeah, he was like, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go in the house because tonight, tonight's going to be weird. <laughs> I ate those two blunts when the cops came. <laughs> when they spanned the camera out and this nigga was looking confused into the atmosphere, I was like, Lord, he high as shit. I mean, just think, not one blunt, two. two. And you know Darius be smoking that shit. He yeah, he probably got shit. that good shit. So just double of that. Man, yeah, he about to be high for a, for a while. All, all, all night. Hitting him at the same time. All night. Yes. Body died. You're ingesting. You get high ingesting this, so I believe. So, yeah. Um. So, Ern decides he's going to go do daddy daycare. <laughs> Warm the milk up. He's gonna go to Vanessa's house. He walks to Vanessa. He, he takes some of the money, puts it in his shoe, and the rest of it he keeps in the roll. He goes to Vanessa's house. They were talking about some old movie called The Homies. Some some that the homeboy something met. Is that what they were watching? I, yeah, I, they meant they said the name of it. I didn't I didn't catch it in the caption. I, I missed just saw something about what like did they said something about water? Like did he? I can't remember. I just, it was weird. I, it was a weird movie. Yeah, it was. Um, they were feeding the baby, and they were also talking about the food she cooked. You know, if it was good or not. And they chill, watch the movie. Ironically, playing Erica Badu. Right. So they um chill, watch the movie. They kicking. They having a little. You know, everything. We're we're in a good place right now. Moment. He kind of got them straight. They seem seems to be. She's not as worried as much. She's kind of she's calmer. Um, he's cool. So a little cuddling. Yeah, they they having their moments. Uh, Swift comes over and well, she gives him. Let me see. No, yeah, yeah. Um, Swift comes over and knocks on the door. Swift lives like next door, man, or whatever, something like that. I'm confused. I don't know. If Swift came over. If Swift lives in the building. I I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, I don't. I mean, but how would they how would Swift even know Ern was there regardless? I assume, yeah, I, I assume Swift lives in the building there too. I would assume. <laughs> um and he he comes over and he gives Ern back his key. And the whole time now we're going, that's what was in the pocket. Okay, now what the fuck right. is this key for? What is this key? Right. And I really was wait waiting for some some M night Shamalamanama twist shit. Where he really was dealing drugs. Because I knew that was like a locker key. And I'm like, oh, what is this nigga storing? So, you know, he takes the key and he gives he gives Vanessa Van the band. And she jumps into the you drug are you selling what are you selling drugs? No, we're we're missing the, the one of the funniest parts. Which were? <laughs> when Swift was like oh, yeah. Hey Vanessa <laughs> Nigga. Vanessa knew exactly <laughs> where he was going. Like, this is not the first time. That was not the first time. Oh, and he's, what did he say? If, if, if we start dating, would that be weird? No, he said, if y'all ever break up and we 
Or is that weird, man? Is that weird? And he said, yeah, man, that's weird. And then he was like, she got a sister. Right. She got a sister. He knows she don't got no damn sister. I don't know why. As he was close to the Swift is funny as fuck, man. That was... This nigga knows she ain't got no sister. Would that be weird? <laughs> he knows she ain't got no motherfucking sister. Why he asked that shit? It ain't the first time he asked she had a sister. You van, That's look at you over there looking all good. Looking all uh-huh. looking all good and stuff. <laughs> That's not the first time he's tried to holler either. Hell no. Nah. That nigga ain't right. She was like, Hi Swift. You gotta keep some of your friends at a smooth fucking distance. Mm-hmm. That nigga Swift, he good at returning keys, but he'll steal your pussy. You need to watch out for him, okay? <laughs> shit, he'll take the, he'll he'll give your key back home, but he'll take the keys to the kingdom. That shit ain't no, it's not cool. <laughs> Being there feeding your baby and shit, you be like the fuck Swift. Oh, I'm just trying to help, dog. She got a sister. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, Earn uh, Earn gives her the gives her the stack, and she asks him if he's actually dealing. He fucks with her. It makes his face like, yo, I got to do what I got to do out here in these streets, son. Got to do what needs to be done to feed my daughter. I want her to be out here like my father broke and shit. My father. <laughs> my father. <laughs> and Van is like, yo, what the fuck? And he's like, no, nah, I'm just fucking with you. You really think I can sell drugs? Like, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm actually flattered that you think I can sell drugs out here in these streets. I'd be terrible right. at it, which he would. He would get robbed so quick. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, look what happened at the club. He couldn't even get yeah. his full five thousand. All that they Dig, know I niggas drink know juice. I mix juices. That's the greatest. <laughs> niggas know I drink ever. juices. <laughs> niggas know I drink juice and shit. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so true. Niggas ain't what scared of me like, like they're scared of you, man. I'm so like that was the whole first season that white dude used a <laughs> nigga around him and not around everybody else. <laughs> Oh, they, like that! I feel like that was the greatest lie. Like niggas know I drink juice. <laughs> like, so um, ain't about that life, carrying that weight. <laughs> he gets a, he gets another um, full circle moment. Brings another thing to close here with Vanessa, where she says you're a good dad, and the season pretty much opened up with, "I need your help with her." You know. Yeah. She also said, "I hate you." Well, she said, I hate you because he fucked with her about the drug dealer shit. But no, remember, she also said, I hate you to the last episode when he started saying all that uh, sweet stuff. Mm-hmm. Remember at the Jack and Jill thing, he said all, the, all those sweet things about her and she walked away. Oh, she was legit pissed at him up. then because he was fucking with her. <laughs> but this time she met it like, I hate you, like playful. I hate you oh, always yeah. playing jokes like, on me. You always fucking you. with me. Yeah. That last I hate you was a, no, I hate you. You do shit that pisses me off. And this was a, I love you, hate you. So he um he doesn't stay over. He finishes the movie and he goes ahead and she tells him, you know, you can stay if you want. And he's like, No, nah, I'm good. <laughs> that that's that's cold for uh mm-hmm. if you, you want to kind of tonight, right? <laughs> up in it is where you could be. <laughs> but he don't want to be up in it tonight. Not tonight. He's had a long day. Uh <laughs> A stressful. He's, a, he's had a long day. He did a lot of walking. Yeah. Almost got yeah, shot by I, the I cops. Got, there's a part of me that feels like he just wanted to, to end the day. Like he had that good night with her and with his daughter, and he just wanted to end it right there. Like, right. let this be good. I don't want to do too much. I don't want to go too far. Just let it end like this. And yeah. I'm happy. And probably he just needed a moment, I think. Like he did, a, he partied hard last night. He did all these things. He had a long. He did have a long day. It was and things kind of worked out for him in the end. And he'd been worried all day. He legit was worried as shit all day. That's yeah, stressful when you're when you're worried like that for hours. You know, and you don't get to reconcile that. Yeah, because he said I. He, he said I'll call you tomorrow. Yeah, I think he just needed some him time. That's draining. That's draining. I've been in those uh-huh. situations where I've been worried about some shit all day, and then it finally resolves itself, and I'm like, okay. After that, I don't want to be bothered. I just want to like sit and chill because you just been you've been on ten all day, mm-hmm. and he was he was really fucking worried. So now we're waiting. Like, what is this key for? What is this key for? And when he walked up to the storage unit after listening to elevators, which this was not by accident, they specifically put elevators playing in oh, this no. scene for a they, reason. They, that they, verse, they played, yeah, they played the two. They play Andre's first verse, Andre's uh, second verse. Mm-hmm. And not the first two verses, they 
which basically those two verses are about Andre and Big Boys come up in Atlanta. Yeah. And it was literally everything that has happened to Paperboy and Earn. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, we were trying to get the first verse when we were trying to come up, you know, talking about walking through what, through Hell and the Low, you know, just trying to start something, you know, mm-hmm. good and everything like that. And then that, that second verse that Andre does where he's sitting there, somebody come up to him like, yo, man, I know you got Buku bills and shit like that. And he's like, man, <laughs> I ain't got no loot. I ain't got no money. To the he end said, of the you week, know, I live by the beat like we live check to check. Like that whole part was just. Mm-hmm. And that was after he got in the storage unit. So, and we get to see what the situation is. So, the first part is, like you said, them trying to get, make rap a thing that they can profit right. from. Like, live off of rap and something that they love to do. That verse plays first. And it, it ends on the bar. This shit here must stop, like, freeze. And then that's when it cuts. They cut the song completely. And that's basically like the end of this chapter, right? Because things do have to change for him. Things needed to change. Yeah. And that's basically how the season kicked off. Things needed to change yeah. with his situation. It just wasn't working for him. And then, you know, with it really ended with, you know, like I said, the last verse, doing the hole in the wall clubs, this shit here must stop. You know, we already know from early in the episode that they got they got the chance to go on tour right. with somebody else. So, so it's foreshadowing. Next, like, it's taking that next step up. It's the close to this chapter. Like they legit close this chapter using that song yeah. and the images in this episode. He mm-hmm. opens up the storage bin. And I knew I knew what the deal was when he went to the storage bin. I was like, Lord, this is because that was a question we asked last a week. A lot of time. Like, where's the nigga sleeping? Where has he been staying? And mm-hmm. he lives in the storage bin. Like that's when he's not with a chick, or he's not staying with Van, when he's not crashing at Alfred's house, he lives in the storage bin. And, you know, he's got all his stuff in there from college, I'm guessing, everything that was in his room, because mom said they cleaned his room out and shit, so this is where it is. And I'm wondering if they mentioned the storage bin in the first episode, that they put his shit in storage. I don't remember anything. I don't either. I'm, I'm wondering if I go back, though, because I know they said they cleaned his Would it be something out. really subtle? Right. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I'm going to be watching every last episode over again. Mm-hmm. As if I haven't seen them already, like millions of yeah. times and get to, but, and get to watch them in that good you know get to watch them in order so you can watch all of them so they're having that week you know between you can just kind of binge watch them and you see those connections that you kind of miss yep and make sure you watch it with the closed caption on y'all yeah <laughs> so you don't miss nothing. Doing that. so um he kind of lays down and then the, the song starts up again and this song is more pow- is more about the money that this verse that Andre Spitz is more about their money situation and dealing with the music shit, which is what he's dealing with. Because right now he's pulling the money out of his shoe. He kept two hundred dollars, and that's what yeah. he's got. That's 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 how much money he kept from all the work he's been doing. Like I'm not sure people think like you got to think about it like this. This isn't what he makes weekly. Like he still has to go to work at the airport making nothing with Swift tomorrow. And the two hundred dollars they can, I think the last time we checked, the money he got from the airport was something around like maybe ninety dollars a paycheck. Oh yeah, because that's what he took a uh, van out right with. So he got two hundred dollars so- to his name with the money he makes biweekly from the airport shit when he does get paid. Mm-hmm. And we don't know how long specifically he's been grinding with Alfred for this money, but this is it. Like he took most of it. And he gave it to Van. I think it to really Van. shows the type of person that Earn is. Like, he has a bad rap because he has dropped the ball so much. But at the end of the day, which is what this video, this episode really is at the end of the day, Earn is looking out for everybody, is trying to look out for everybody else first. He yeah. does stuff for himself too. Like, he and Van's relationship isn't as good as it could be if he were all the way there. But she not all the way there either. Yeah. No, it's that's and, a dysfunctional relationship. And he says continuously through all the episodes, I'm doing this for my daughter. I want to be in a better place for my daughter. You know, when Van was asking what his stuff is, you know, what do the issues like do this for your daughter? He's like, what, what do you think I'm here for? You know, he was always, and even from the first episode when he rolled out the bed and he picked up his daughter, you can always tell he, you know, he wanted something more. He had a close connection to her. So, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't even surprising that he just give that whole bill fold up. Right. Now, it might be surprising to some of them ain't shit niggas out there, you know, but. To me, it wasn't. I mean, like, his sacri- he's been living in the storage bin. 
It is a place. It is a roof over his head. It's the size of a big room. Yeah. And you gotta think about it. You gotta probably, that, that storage too. That, those ain't free. Right. Yeah, and that's probably like the uh, climate controlled, so. Not saying that it's the best conditions, but it is a place. And, and you can lock it, so <laughs> you know you don't have to worry about nobody coming in trying to rob you. I was actually wondering about that. Could you? Can you lock? You can lock those things from the inside, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's what I thought. <clears throat> but yeah. yeah, so this is his situation. I think it speaks to a lot to Earn. And Earn didn't really get his own episode. He got the prison episode, like the jail episode, but not really. He still shared that. Like this episode, which he shared with other characters, but this was specifically more focused on him to kind of tie all of this together at the end. You know, I think the only person that did not get their own tie-in, ep- like their own episode for development the only people were Darius and Paperboy. Darius got an episode where we got to see him as a more developed character and a lot deeper than just a weed head. And Albert, Alfred has been on a lot of episodes and has shown his different sides to his character. But neither one of them actually got an episode like Earn and Vanessa got. Where it was well, what pretty- about uh, the Paperboy with, uh, with, uh, with Zan? I thought about that. And that was that the same episode with Darius and... Uh, earn. Yeah. See, that's that, and that's what I'm talking about. And that, in those two, because you could say the same thing about Alfred and the the Beebs episode. That was the same idea, right? Earn was doing PR shit, and he was getting playing, supposed to be learning how to play his role as the rapper. Yeah. This and uh, well, I mean, well, you know what? Say- I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Alfred got the Montague episode. My bad. Completely wrong. Oh, yeah, that was completely all him. I'm completely wrong. Darius is the only person that didn't get his own episode. I'm completely wrong. Completely wrong. Alfred got his episode. Earn got his. Vanessa got hers. Darius is the only one that didn't get his own episode. He pretty much just got to be uh, the whimsical, uh, magical Negro for (laughs) Earn. The Enlightenment. He got to be his uh, God. What was that movie Will Smith played in where he was the golfer? Uh, the Legend of Bagger Vance. Yeah, he got to be his Bagger Vance. <laughs> that's what Darius got to be. That one episode. So yeah, I think that's a I, like there's so much to this show. If you think of it as a film, but it legit is a movie that needed to be done in in episodes. Like we we I've had I've had conversations with people about this before. There are some movies that need to be done as television shows. They work better as television shows. Like I know they're they're redoing the movie Stephen King's It, and I get that they're gonna make it a two part movie. It needs to be done as a television show, similar to Stranger Things. That is how much content is there. It's just way too much content for them to try to do this as a movie. Would not have worked. It would have been a really long fucking movie. Oh, you mean Atlanta as a movie? Yeah, for them to do Atlanta as a movie would not have worked. It needed to be a television show. No, I, I don't think I would have liked it as a movie. No. It's 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 good how it is. Don't Yeah. For it to be for it to touch on the, the black nuances that it did. It needed to be a mm-hmm. television show. Because I think too, you know, the the fact that, you know, each episode we can you know, people can sit and have conversations about certain subject matters and, you know, they have that whole week to to talk about it and you can go back and watch it more so with the movie you have to watch the whole thing you know what i mean right. i think it's just easier as well yeah so. so um yeah man that's uh sad to say that it's is so it. over we'll be back season two um there is an there's an article out for people listening and this and this is where we can get y'all's help right because who's to say that we could not maybe try to get FX to reach out to us to be like an official Atlanta recap podcast. It could happen. It could. Right. But it doesn't happen without help from the people who listen to these shows. We can't make, we can't prove to people that we're, we would be a good addition to Atlanta as a recap show. We can't do that. You have to do that for us as listeners I say that because there was an article posted today on the concourse Deadspin, and it was by Billy Hazley, who typically, I guess, writes about soccer. But he decided he wanted to write about this show. 
It sounds like some fuck shit. And I'll just read the title of it. I'm not going to read From the article. From his last name, it sounds like some fuck shit. Yeah, I'll, I'll just read the title. Um, Atlanta stumbled too often to really soar. Goodbye. Is his recap. And not only is he wrong, he is dead ass wrong. To the point that if you go into the comments of this article, and I have this article posted in our Facebook group. If you go into the art, into the comments, almost 90 something percent of the comments are telling him he's dead ass wrong and he just missed Good. the point and that he should go back to writing about soccer. Good. But I'm this, glad. I'm glad. But, the, but he's going to look at this. He's going to be like, well, they just don't understand what I wrote. I looked at that and I went, oh, my God, all of these people are fans of this show. How do we get them to listen to our podcast? That's what I want. So what I'm asking people to do is if they'll approve it, go into this Concourse Deadspin article. And again, it is on our Facebook page, our Facebook group. Go in there, leave a comment and tell them, tell people where they can go to listen to an Atlanta podcast that is good. That is a good recap of the show. I mean us. Don't go tell them about somebody else's Atlanta podcast. That doesn't help us out either. Right. But let people know, where's my 40 Acres does an Atlanta recap review of this show, and it's really, really good, and it's really, really detailed. Where these episodes are 26 minutes long, they do an hour and so far 25 minutes. Our last recap was two hours long. If we ain't doing a better recap than everybody else out here, then we should just stop. Like, let me know who's doing a better recap than us and covering every aspect of this, every black ass part of this. You definitely can't do it in a one page write up. Mm-mm. You can't do it in a in a 10 minute recap video on YouTube. So please go to the concourse.deadspin.com. Look for Atlanta stumble too often to really soar. Leave a I ain't asking you to read the shit. I'm asking you to leave a comment and say, for anybody who really loves this show, go check out Where's My 40 Acres review and recaps. Cause that's how we can get the word out. We trying to be official like by season two. Cause nobody was really doing recaps like us. I've been checking. I'm nosy like that. <laughs> and um also I'd like, sure to no inter- I'd like to interview some of these people. Like I'm trying to get Brian up here. I'm trying to get Keith Stanfield and Donald Glover and Zazzy Beats. I would love to interview them. I have questions. I have so many questions. You J. Cole lovers, um, Paperboy, the real Paperboy. <laughs> oh, and Steven Glover. Bri- Who? Oh, huh? you're talking about Brian Tyree. Yeah, he's he's born, he's from Fayetteville. Man, that nigga went to Yale. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm trying to interview all of them. I'm trying to interview Hero. I'm trying to interview Steven Glover. I'm trying to interview Swift. Not really, though. By Swift, sorry, that was Swift. Um, I was gonna Swift say, out, Swift, out there, Swift out there fucking up. He gone. Swift out there oh, fucking yeah. the wrong thing. That's what Swift out there I... fucking up in the wrong thing. So sadly, but um, appreciate everybody who listened. We'll be resuming. Where's my Forty Acres episodes next week? Uh, they'll be back. So we'll be back on our ratchet social pop culture conversation grind. That's right. We're gonna new president. Mm-hmm. So I'm just wow, and I'm, um, wow, and <laughs> crying. I mean, just just stab me in the heart again. No more Atlanta TV shows. Lord, now. please vote. Yeah, please oh, vote, y'all. Yeah, pe- like people go vote, man. Go vote, rate. please. Right. Don't don't be this. Don't be these people that ain't gonna vote. Go they, vote, nigga. They're trying their best to keep black people, Latino people, brown people, they're trying to keep y'all from voting, man. Like, they're doing everything but, you know, having literacy tests back at the polls and shit. Like, go vote. Yes. Because if you, if you, people are like, oh, my, your vote's not important, your vote's not important. It'll be These important if you be vote. trying to stop you so much. Yeah. If your vote wasn't important, there man. There were so many of our ancestors that couldn't vote. Yeah. Like, if, if, the, if voting wasn't this important, why has there been a history in this country of motherfuckers trying to stop you from doing it? Yep. Mm-hmm. And they talking about, at some places, KKK and, and, and people talking about they're going to be watching and shit. Like, I'm, I'm about to get, I'm about to wear my nice black, 
Black Lives Matter shirt when I go vote. I hope they watch you vote. I wish a nigga would do something. Go watch him. Go watch us vote. Watch. Get out here. Vote. I don't want to hear this shit about how Hillary this and Hillary that. Look, fucking like Keith Olbermann right now is my motherfucking hero. His YouTube recaps of why Trump is a piece of bullshit are the greatest things spoken on YouTube. Like, go no, check them joints out. They're so good. But we ain't never vote. had shit like this before, man. This is ridiculous. Like, like before. You just didn't agree with a motherfucker's views. Or he's a tyrannical monster. Like he's, but he's I, yeah, a like, sexist, like, misogynistic, I'm, racist, tyrannical son of a bitch. Yeah, and we need to vote. Disgusting. Like I'm scared. I'm, I'm scared of this dude. Like you know, when you come in there, like it's like the last, the ones I voted. You know, the ones I voted in was the second Bush, the uh, you know, uh, the Obamas, McCain, McCain, Obama, Obama, um, Mitt Romney. Romney. Now, I know who I voted for. I know who I like. But, nigga, if Mitt Romney or McCain had won any of those times, I wouldn't have been like, well, shit, the country going down the fucking two. Right, it wouldn't have been the end of the world. But this motherfucker like, like, "Mm, that's a different thing. That person has different agendas. But this nigga, this nigga is different. He got to go. And we need to keep him out of there. So, don't be a bum fuck. Go vote, please. Go vote. Go vote, man. All right. And uh, shout out to everybody again. Donald Glover, Stephen Glover, appreciate y'all for putting this show together. Hero, y'all motherfuckers are amazing. Uh, FX, thank you for giving Blinkers a chance to be black. And uh, we and will holler. Giving holler's... us the blackest music along oh, yeah. with it. That great black Atlanta shit. Like, yeah. It ended with Outcast. How did. great. Can it started it with drum and ended with Outcast. <laughs> yes. And it has some knuck of you buck in the middle. Yeah. And some future. We'll holler at y'all next yeah. season, Talk man. Talk about fucking real sisters. Oh my god. And we will <laughs> we will see our normal oh, listeners god. next week with a with a Where's My Forty Acres classic episode. And if you're not premium, um, I don't know why. Cause we got reviews and some movie caps coming. Until then though, we are out. Peace.